Today we're going to go and analyze some Veris data using just Excel. Now the DBIR team normally uses the R programming language to do its uh, Veris analysis. We've got the Veris R package, which just lets us do various things in there. And generally we've got a good tool chain set up in R, most of which is available freely online from our GitHub at github slash vzrisk. But, you know, not everyone wants to set up R and learn R to analyze Veris. And Veris is great in that it can give you a holistic look at your incidents and breaches, even if you don't want to get into R. And so we're going to just do it in Excel today. And so we're going to look at pivot tables and just using pivot tables and normal charts, we're going to do a bit of Excel analysis of Veris data. This is using the VCDB data. And I'll put a link to the VCDB data set as well as a link to this specific spreadsheet so you can go through and do some of this analysis yourself. So we're gonna start by selecting the data and we're gonna insert a pivot table into a new worksheet. And when we do that, um, it doesn't really show a lot because we haven't built our pivot table yet. And so let's analyze actions. We're gonna pick out the seven actions that are part of Varus from the field names up here and forgive me, it sometimes takes me a while to find them all. Uh, the data set isn't sorted, but we're gonna find them all eventually, get them all down here, and we'll be able to do some analysis of them. And so now we've got them in here, and you can see already that it's picked up a lot of what we need to know, right? It's summed up each of the columns to let us know how many of each type of action we have. But looking at the numbers really doesn't help us compare easily, and so we wanna put a chart in there. Now we're gonna select all around it so that Excel knows we wanna work with a chart when we do this. And we're gonna choose the recommended horizontal bar chart because it's easy and straightforward, it's right there for us. And when we drag that out, we can immediately see some specific interesting facts. The first being that clearly hacking and error are our top action. But next is that malware and social are our lowest in the VCDB data that we're looking at, except for environmental. You know, and that's useful already. That's something that you can start thinking about and making decisions using. Now, let's go and look at something a little more detailed. We're gonna use the entire data set again. We're going to go and create another pivot table. And again, we're gonna go put the actions into it. Um, starting with the same stuff we did last time. But this time we're gonna branch out and do something slightly differently. So here we have the values in the column. We're gonna move the values over to the row. And the reason we're gonna do that is so that we can analyze by year. And you see when we drag that in, it stretches out the action varieties by year. And now we can take that and we can chart that. And so we need to select our data. And we're gonna to select to 2014 because 2015 data really isn't filled in and the grand total really isn't a um, data set. or isn't a real column, it's the total of all the other columns. And we'll use that to make our chart. So we're gonna insert a chart and let's, let's insert a line chart. That's more appropriate for the type of data we have. And we're gonna expand it out. We're gonna notice something about it. Um, Excel mistook the values row as a um, data series. And so we need to remove that. So we're gonna go ahead and remove that. And instead we wanna use the years as the horizontal axis labels. And so sometimes it lets me insert and sometimes not but we could just copy and paste it in. So we want row four from B to U. So B to U and we want row four. So we'll just fill in the numbers directly, which is easy. And now we have the years down at the bottom. We've got our plot and we can see how the various actions change over time. Obviously uh, VCDB isn't that old. And so things out here are older incidents that got coded in once one or two at a time, but we can see how the data is expanding through the year. Now let's try one final trick. So let's say you want to look at something more than just incidents. We're going to modify this to look at breaches as well. First, we're going to drag the chart down and we're going to select the pivot table and go in and edit it a little bit. We're going to grab data disclosure and bring it down into the rows. And we can see that up here. And in this case, the yes column represents breaches or the yes row. And so let's reflect that in our chart. We're gonna select the data and we'll make the first series the breaches. So we'll come down here and select the yes row and we'll make sure we capture the title so we know what it is. And let's for comparison change the second series to represent 
the grand total. So we'll select it and we'll give it a name as well by selecting the grand total cell. And just to make sure, we'll make sure our labels are correct because we've changed things around. So we'll get those selected as well. And then all we have to do is say OK and we've got our chart. Now we can't tell what the orange and the blue are. We could guess at them, but we can't exactly tell. So we're going to go up here to the chart design and just insert a legend down at the bottom so we can tell. And now we can look at some things, right? Because we can tell that for our physical actions, we have lots of incidents, but only a small subset of them are breaches. Whereas for social actions, even though we have very few, we have a lot of breaches, the same for malware. And that's useful information. And so the great thing about Varus is that it helps you holistically look at your breaches and your incidents. Even if you can't go and deploy R and do all sorts of crazy DBIR things, you can still get a lot out of it and be confident that you're learning from your incidents and breaches.